Thank you very much, Rumbi. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Richard Jones. I'm Editorial Director at DevEx, and I'm delighted, if we take a seat, to be joined on stage by Dr. Ruben Ayala, who's Chief of Policy and Advocacy at Operation Smile. Welcome, Ruben. Thank you so much, Richard, and great pronunciation, by the way. <laughs> Ruben Ayala. Ruben. Uh, muchas gracias. Um, well, welcome yeah. to the DevEx stage. Um, a big thanks to Operation Smile for your partnership and helping us to power our journalism here in, in New York this week. Um, perhaps we could jump into it uh, to set the scene. Um, could you give us a quick introduction to Operation Smile and maybe start to break down some of the challenges that, that you're um, facing in the communities that you're serving around the world in terms of access to safe and affordable surgical care. Uh, yes, thank you so much for the opportunity. Great to be with you. I am privileged to serve as part of an organization called Operation Smile that has been taking care of children with congenital conditions known as cleft lips and cleft palates uh, for 42 years now. And over the years, we've been able to give high quality, safe surgical care and comprehensive care to children around the world. Uh, and we're very proud of that. But uh, as our co-founder would say, children bring us back to the community and they show us their need. And because of that, we have been exposed to endless amounts of people who come to us, not only for cleft conditions, but for burn care, for tumors, for trauma-related um, reconstruction. So you're exposed to these massive needs. So when you're asking me about safe surgical care, I'm here to tell you about the, the biggest challenge and injustice in health that you might, ne might have never heard about, and that is the lack of access to safe surgical care. Five billion people in the world lack access to safe surgical obstetrics and anesthesia care. And, and can you give us a li little bit more on, on specific barriers that, that patients in, in particularly low and middle income countries are facing in terms of accessing cleft and other um, essential surgeries? Yeah, so they're endless. Uh, so there are barriers that are cultural, financial, geographical, structural, and they cause people to delay care. And they, they don't seek care on time. They might reach, they, they delay reaching care. And if, if they get to a point, the care is not, might not actually be available. So imagine it this way. A mother might not go look for care for her child because she might think her child has been cursed and this is a punishment for her. And we have to change that, that perception. Uh, a family might not reach, might not look for a place because it's way too far for them. A, a community might pull together the resources to get to a place of care, but they, they finally get to a hospital and there are no doctors or no nurses or people who are able uh, to offer care and be qualified for that. So myriad barriers, but can you tell us a little bit more about how, how your uh, strategy is helping to overcome this in practice? What, what is Operation Smile? Um, doing to really affect sustainable change and what are some of the key benefits of the approaches that you're using compared to traditional models? Uh, certainly. So over the years, we've had to figure out how to overcome those barriers. So a lot of education, awareness, uh, certainly delivery of high quality medical care so that people trust us and they know that they can receive the care. But, but um, currently and into the future, we're really basing our efforts in a hub and spoke model. And if you think about it, and we look at different industries that have succeeded. So many of us came here today and we got on a plane, traveled at 35,000 feet. You might, might have watched a movie. You probably got a little upset about the crackers that you got instead of a nice meal. But the point is you got here because you had a whole ecosystem that could take care of that uh, type goal that you have. So, so we're trying to do the same when it comes to health by leaning on hubs um, that have excellence and training uh, for people in the spoke so that care is closer to children, care is closer to families, that there are systems that are in place to support health workers, and ultimately that, they work, that, they, that the care is offered um, in an affordable or free way for people. And, and in terms of results, I mean, how, how is this model positively impacting communities that you're working with? Could you give us a, a few key outcomes or, or any lessons learned from, from your experience? Yeah, so this is something we're really proud about. Um, so when we look at a place like Guatemala, um, where we are working Guatemala City with our, with our, uh, our hope, but we go to different places in the country uh, to create these spokes, we're seeing that care is closer uh, indeed to people, that health workers, as they, re as they receive the care and the, the support and, and, the, and the teaching and the training, feel empowered to actually deliver the care. And in fact, I must highlight that a lot of these health workers are real heroes who all they need is a little bit of support uh, from us 
to be able to fulfill the promise that they've made to their own communities. Um, and beyond the hope and spoke model, we realized that in coordination with the ministers of health, uh, as we take care of people and we develop the trust, we can dream higher. We just um, supported the Ministry of Health of, of Ghana. The government of Ghana launched a national surgical plan, uh, and they're aiming in the next five years to make sure that they're offering outstanding care to 30 million people. Wow. And could you give us a little bit more about um, how you're providing support to um, to health workers in specific communities? What what sort of activities are you are you engaged in, and and how can other groups help you um, in this journey to to really strengthen um, the, the 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 point of care um, uh, in in the communities in which you're serving? Yeah, so health workers, what they need from us sometimes is that support. And we offer that support in terms of education, which is a huge multiplier. Uh, a lot of times people are swimming by themselves, trying to get ahead and just to come and give them the tools and the resources and the, and the instruction. And to, for them to know they have a network or support gives them the chance to propel uh, care way forward. Um, supplies, equipment, improvements in infrastructure so that they have a, a place where they can offer care in dignity and patients can, can, can know that this is a place of hope and change are some of the things that we're undertaking as an organization on an ongoing basis. So, so the solutions are there, but how can you create sustainable solutions and how do you achieve scale in all of this? Yeah, so that's a little bit of the challenge for the future and hopefully a little bit of a call to action. So we know that we can deliver care. We know that the solutions are available. If you think about it, we're in New York, the last official hospital closed New York in 1895, and we're still grappling with issues around surgical care for mothers, for instance, in other parts of the world. Um, but the solutions that we can offer relate to education, investments, innovations, partnerships, uh, coordination, uh, so many Outstanding speakers have come today to talk about the specific entities that they deal with, but there's so much that we can do together and the solutions are there. Um, one of the things I would say is for any of you who are here, if you want to hear a little bit more about Operation Smile and want to think about the future and how we can, what we can do together, just come to us because there are no crazy ideas, just potential strokes of genius when taking care of people. And if you did have a, a magic wand, Ruben, what, what would be the, the next frontier for Operation Smile? Um, what's the vision for the, for the future of, of cleft care? Um, what needs to happen now and what needs to happen, you know, say, in the next five, ten years um, in, in this sector to really drive forward change? Yeah, so again, we're very proud of what we have done over the years uh, and we'll continue to offer high quality care. But sometimes we have to just stop and think, are we really growing? Are we stewards of the past or are we are proponents of the future? So as I look at the next frontier of Operation Smile, it will be once again coordination with governments, partnerships, huge support and respect for the health workers that are doing heroic works and a focus, a relentless focus on really bringing opportunities and dignity to people around the world through surgical care and uh, bring out the crazy ideas. We will, we will figure out a way to make those big, hairy, audacious goals into an opportunity for people. Bring on the ideas. And, and how can um, the global health community, you know, many, many luminaries in global health uh, sitting out in our audience today and speaking on the DevEx stage this week, um, but how can, how can they help you to more effectively contribute to, to the mission at Operation Smile? What do you need from global health practitioners, policymakers, funders, um, here in New York during UNGA 79 um, and, and beyond that. Yeah, so I think we have to stop thinking about the work that we're doing health as specific single entities. And we have to start thinking about how together we figure out how to invest in health systems. Because the, the same health worker who might be helping us screen a patient is the same health worker that might be actually helping offer a vaccine. Uh, so, so how can we co-invest? And actually the word is invest. You know, we continue to look at health as an expense when in reality, it is, it is the way for us to really reap the benefits of a vision of a hopeful potential future filled with dignity and opportunity. Dr. Ruben Ayala from Operation Smile, I think we'll leave it there, but many thanks for, for these minutes on stage and for your partnership and helping us to really drive forward our journalism here at UNGA in New York City. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Muchas Thank gracias. you so much for all of you. Muchas gracias.